today we're going to be doing the T-halving joint today. The T-halving joint will be used for framework, but the skills we're going to gain from this we'll be able to use on other joints and other projects we're going to do. I'll run through the tools we need and then we'll get cracking. So the tools we're going to be using today is a combination gauge, a combination square, a steel wall and a pencil. I've got my mallet, a tenon saw, a 25mm bevel edge chisel, my bench truck, my vice and my bench and then we're using two pieces of CLS that are cut to 200mm. So before we start any marking out we need to decide which piece of timber goes where. I've decided to put that one on top of that one and you can see that I've marked my face and edge marks. So this is the reference point so I know that it always goes back together this way and it also shows me where the square goes and where the marking gauge goes to mark it out. So first step, I'm going to come in 10mm from this edge here. And then off that mark, I'm going to put mark 180mm. And then using my square tight to the timber, I'm going to mark these all the way around. So I've marked that to length. What we're going to do now is find the middle. So half of 180 millimetres is 90 millimetres. Just remembering this piece of timber sits on there, I'm going to measure the width of this piece. That measures 62 mil. So I'm going to mark 31 millimetres off that line. I'm going to then hold this piece of timber on and mark there. This ensures when this piece of timber is fitted into there, it's going to be exactly the, the right width. I'm going to then mark them across and roughly halfway down. Okay. Then I'm going to look and start marking the other one. As you can see I've already marked it to the length with my 10mm and 180mm. So now at this top end we're going to measure the width of this piece of timber which is 62mm again and mark it on the back of here. It's marked on the back because if you remember that one's sitting into there so I need to maintain this top piece. So I'm going to square along there and run roughly halfway down. So now we're going to use our combination gauge. We're going to run it around the top edge of this one and between that line and that line and that line and that line on this one. This should be already set up, so the timber is 36 millimetres, so the single pin needs to be 18 millimetres. I'm just going to check it on this piece, so I'm going to put a pin trick that side and that side. They match up, so I know this is accurate. Remember when we were using a combination gauge, we need to always remember that edge there is on your face or edge. So I'm going to put it in my voice. Nice and secure, face side is there, so I'm going to run my marking gauge down like this. Remember faintly at the start and then slowly getting deeper. There we go. I'm just going to slightly move it. pinhole at the bottom where the line is so then the combination gauge should just roll down and drop into it. So that's that one done. This one's a bit simpler. 
I'm going to put a pin mark there and just roll that down till it meets the other one. And do the same on this one. The face edge is there, a pin there, and just roll it down and it should drop into it. And again, just going to use my pencil just to mark in there. So you can clearly see. So here's our piece of timber marked out. You can see my face and edge marks, so I know which way it goes back together. Just to make it clear with what we're removing, we're going to be taking this piece out here. This is our waste on this one. And then we're going to be taking the bottom section out of here. So once that's removed and that's removed, that should, should sit nicely in there. So I'm going to be cutting this piece first. I'm using my bench hook in my vise. We're going to cross cut along this line and then we're going to put it in our vise and cut down that line. Using my tenon saw, so always remember, nice firm grip with your finger there. As you can see, I'll guide it with my thumb first. Just about cutting that line in half. Okay. So now we're going to put it in our vise at the angle. Start cutting down. Then we're going to spin it around and do the same this way. We can now start cutting this piece. We're going to cut down this line, this line, and then just a cut in the middle. Okay. Make regular checks that you're cutting to the line. It'll make it much easier when we're chiseling it out. As you can see, I've cut right down to that marking gauge line, so when we chisel it out, it should all come out flush to that line. So the next step is chiseling this section out of here. So we're going to put it carefully in our voice. And to chisel it out, we're going to be using 25mm bevel edge chisel and a mallet. With these chisels, these have got a metal end on them, so you can use a hammer, but I'm going to stick with my mallet. And as we are doing chiselling, I'm going to wear some spe safety specs. So initially to start chiselling, I turn the chisel up that way. And I start at the top of the timber and carefully tap away. And you'll see, because of the angle of the chisel, it makes the waste timber go upwards. And I keep doing that until I get down to my marking gauge line. And then I'm going to remove the timber and spin it round in the vise. If we chiseled all the way through, we might end up splitting out the other side. So it's always worthwhile to keep spinning the timber round. So as you can see, I've started coming down this side just keep going down to your line. So I'm just going to continue using my chisel and my mallet just to flatten this off. You 
You may have noticed I've spun the chisel rail now, so the flat edges at the bottom. This will help make this nice and smooth, nice and even, and nice and flat. So when you get a bit further down, you probably don't need your mallet anymore. And with a sharp chisel and your hands behind the blade, you can just continue to take these little bits out until it's one nice, smooth surface. So here's the two components finished. We just need to see if they go together and then we can cut our waist timber off so they're the correct length. So remember again where our face and edge marks are as a reference, the joint should just push in. So I'm just going to cut all our waist timber off now. Um, I'm going to do this one while the joint's in place. The other three I'm going to take apart and just use my bench hook and my tenon saw. So there's the T-Harbin joint done and complete. Hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to doing the next one.